Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. We're on episode 10, and we are still in that eternal struggle known as the Paragus 2 mining station. We've made our way through the mines, and we're getting ready to hit a turbo lift that should take us somewhere else because bad stuff's about to happen. Of course. So uh, let's hit that lift and see where it takes us. Oh, oh, we're about to have some talky time. Yes, let's uh, immediately happen upon the one body. Did I just put a sword through my shoulder or is that just the model clipping? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's start with how do you know me? I am not your master. Answer. I am a survivor of the Harbinger, just as you were master. With the unexpected termination of my previous master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Um who was your previous master? What happened? Irritated answer. Oh, master, it is such a long, dull Don't story. irritated answer me. To our current situation. Uh. Why don't you tell me anyway? Resident explanation. That has been the subject of considerable discussion since our arrival here, master. Many have attempted to claim you and this unit as salvage. I was crudely interrogated concerning our brief history together on board the Harbinger before its communications, weapons, and engines suffered the cascade failure that disabled the ship. Um... And how come I don't remember any of this? It is possible you were incapacitated and locked in the well-shielded cargo compartment as the Harbinger was being systematically crippled, Master. Incapacitated? Clarification. Yes, Master. No doubt the flurry of destruction on board the Harbinger somehow drugged you into a stupor from which you could not awaken. Most curious. Um. Maybe you better explain these stupor part. Merely a turn of phrase, Master. The implication that your state was due to the result of ingesting large quantities of Juma juice was unintentional. I meant to communicate only Juma juice somehow rendered unconscious before you were lost. Can I go get down to the Galactic A V C store and get a couple of bottles of Juma juice? I mean is that is that about what that is? Alright. Yeah, how, how was I locked in the cargo hold? By locked. I meant sealed, master. Um, that doesn't really change the... <sighs> Alright, what happened next? Following the unusual set of coincidences that led to the cascade failure in the... Coincidences. Any idea what it attacked the small freighter? What was this freighter that the Harbinger brought on board? Why would they take me aboard? I think I know the answer, but let's go with the second question. Explanation. I believe it was a smuggler's vessel by the name of 
the Ebon Hawk. Oh, that sounds familiar. As to its purpose, I do not know. Perhaps it was always its intention to play dead, then kidnap you off the harbinger and rob you. That sounds about right. Uh, bounty? By bounty, I refer to your life, master. It would pain me to see you damaged in any way. That is why the arrival of this Ebon Hawk caused me considerable distress. And... Hmm. I'm torn. Why would the ship have taken me off the Harbinger, and why did the Ebon Hawk come here? Let's go with uh, question number three first. Apology. My memory core cannot provide a clear answer on that point, Master. Suffice to say that once we arrived at this floating rock, our situation became much clearer. Mm hmm. How so? Explanation. Despite my market value, Master, the miners were far more interested in. <laughs> Protocol droid. Much more in certain exclusive markets across the galaxy. Painful and uh -huh. I must confess to feelings of inferiority at the speculated difference between my value. Can I just cut them down now? For your capture. I was forced to remind myself it was not due to a failing of my model or function, but because you were a Jedi. And how did they find out I was a Jedi? Surprised answer. Why I told them, Master. You are the exiled Jedi who served with Revan in the Mandalorian Wars, are you not? I oh, that's news to me. Happened has not been the result of a miscommunication. If so, then the problem lies with the core word databases, which are notoriously spotty. Did I just hear a droid blame his memory? Like, oh man. All right, unpleasantness. That information wouldn't have been in the core databases, only the Jedi archives. Actually, that is a that is a valid point. That information wouldn't have been in the databases. Indignant exclamation! Master, I am only a protocol droid. Protocol droid. It is part of my function to know such information and relay it to any interested parties in the interests of terminating any potential hostiles. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're good at terminating potential hostilities. Alright, um... Potential hostiles? Apparently my vocabulator has suffered some damage, Master. Uh-huh. Terminating any potential hostilities. Yeah. I see. Uh, then what happened? Three standard hours after the division between the miners became apparent, accidents began to occur throughout the facility. Accidents. A result of improper maintenance, I believe. These uh -huh. accidents coincided with the degradation of the mining droid behavioral cores. Crude Coincidentally. To such failures, resulting in murderous rampages. The mortality <laughs> rate of organics in the facility... <laughs> I'll bet it did. I, I I love how there's a lot of like you know. There there should be more air quotes in this. These accidents coincided with the degradation of the mining droid behavioral cores. Crude mo models are prone to such failures, resulting in murderous rampages. All right. So what happened to the rest of the miners? Other questions? I've heard enough. Let's go with what happened to the rest of the miners, because we are on the quest for information. Coincidentally, I bet. The explosions herded the miners into emergency sections of the station quickly and efficiently, cutting them off from communications uh -huh. and facility control. But sadly enough, not the ventilation systems. Sadly enough, you say. What do you mean? You see, the explosions had damaged specific sections of this facility's ventilation systems. 
causing a slow, lethal buildup of toxic fumes in the dormitory yeah. level. I do like this guy. <laughs> a slow, lethal buildup of toxic fumes, huh? Uh, anybody left alive? I do not know, Master. Ironically enough, any miner that fled to the dormitory level to protect themselves from the droids and the explosions would find themselves in a gas-filled death trap. Ironically. Okay. Uh, then I need to get in there and rescue them. It is unlikely any miners remain alive. As I said, the dormitory mm -hmm. has as has the hangar bay. There is no escape. Can Can we try to contact them through a comm link? Unfortunately, communication with the dormitory mm -hmm. section is severed, Master. It is perhaps for the best, especially if any other accidents have occurred in that section. If that were the case, the severed comm link would have spared us the satisfaction of hearing the miners' screams. As they um. out their last moments in fear and terror. Wow. That. Okay. That happened. Uh, there must be another way. Theory. You could walk across the surface of the asteroid to the dormitory airlock, but such a route would be extremely hazardous, and mm -hmm. I do not wish to see you damaged. I bet you don't. Alright. Uh, yeah, here's our option for lighter dark side points. I could either go with it could be hurt or in danger. We need to make sure they're alright. Or, I only want the codes. and I have the codes, I'll dispose of them and leave this rock. I am playing a light side character, just in case you're wondering. So let's go with option number one. Warning. Master, continued exploration of this facility may place you in unnecessary danger. I encourage you to mm -hmm. the medical bay I bet you do. And wait for retrieval from a vessel that is no doubt on the way, even as we continue this pointless conversation. Pointless conversation. I'm your master, I'm giving you an order, another suggestion like that, and I'll turn you into scrap, or I'm going to find those mi miners and you're going to help me. Weary resignation. Okay. Very well, master, but there is very little that I can do. You see, the airlock is sealed by a code. Uh, <laughs> all right, so how do I get the code? Oh, I already possess the code, Master, but I am afraid that it will do you no good. Really? Okay. What do you mean? Condescending explanation. Master, Condescending explanation. Thank you for that. The droid maintenance area and the airlock is voice printed. Voice printed. Did you say? Yes, Master. Many consoles have voice recognition sensors built into their systems so that only selected individuals can unlock them. And you said you already had the code. Can I bypass it? Master, you cannot. You are trapped here just as I am. There is nothing to do except patiently wait for whatever the future. Yeah, that's not an option. I got some more questions for you. How may I be of assistance? Uh, have you seen a T3 unit? Facility, 
It is mm -hmm. indeed curious that I have not seen many since my arrival. However, I feel I must inform you that, droid prejudice aside, T3 models exhibit excessive individualism. Excessive individualism. Routinely memory wiped. This individualism. Mm -hmm. Oh. Irrelevant tangent. Where did you leave the droid, Master? That would logically be the best place to look. Yeah, okay. I, I think I know exactly what you're about, but uh Alright, let's go with he was last seen near the hangar. That's not helping. All right. Well, what else can you answer for me? How may I be of assistance? Um. What's that body there? That is all that remains of the maintenance officer, Master. At the end, he was quite incoherent from the pain, and attempts to facilitate communications with him proved useless. I heard his dying screams. As the droids he tended turned on him, mining him like a piece of asteroid rock. You sound a little, um, uh, gleeful about that. Alright, screams? Recitation. Oh, yes, Master. The record of his last moments were... Five droids, burning through the outer door. They're, they're forcing their way into the bay. Please, stop with it! Oh, oh no, they're, they're through! Oh, my leg! They're burning through my leg! Oh, stop! Addendum. His remaining attempts at communication are variations in decibel, Master. Variations in decibel, you say. ...to gibbering inarticulate attempts to beg for his life. Uh, if you could play back his voice, can't you speak the code? Master, to commit such an act would be in violation of the ethics programming most droids are believed to possess. I am afraid... Oh, don't give me ethics programming. I know what you're about. Let's, uh... Let's try the Persuade. Let's try the second one, because I get a funny feeling that, that goading in, into it is, is not going to give us the result that we want on the light dark side bit. So let's go with uh, number two here. All right, I am gonna I am gonna ask him about some other stuff, but I happen to know that I need to find a bit of equipment first. Don't remember where it is. I will take his eighty-four bucks though. I mean, it'd be a shame to leave it sitting there. That's the door I came through. So we got. Some components off of the broken droid here. Some components off of the broken droid here. Some components off of the broken droid here. Some... What do we have in the cylinder? Ooh! A sonic imprint sensor. That, that sounds like something we can record a voice off of, right? There we go. With the protocol droid's help, I've finished work on the sonic imprint sensors. I've installed them in the mining droids, but I'm locking up the original here to prevent the miners from using its ability to record and playback voices to override the droid's voice print protocols. Yeah, yeah. Be a shame if somebody did that. Alright, so let's use the workbench to upgrade some items. Uh, do we have a scope? No. Oh. Oh, that's right. We can't, uh, we can't use that in that gun. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. We can upgrade the uniform, though, right? No, it wasn't an overlay. It was an uh, underlay, which should give us damage immunity and some resistance to fire and cold. All right. We, we need to also create or break down some items. And what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to go ahead and make... Where is it? A longsword. And we should have the edge and grip to upgrade that, right? We can't do anything else. Although we can get some repair kits and energy shields. How many computer spikes do we have? We've only got one in inventory, so let's go ahead and make... A couple more of those. Alright. Now, we should be able to upgrade our longsword. And... Ooh, do we want keen or bonus on droids? Since we seem to be fighting a lot of droids, we'll go with that. We can get the advanced energy set. Oh wait, no. This can't accept that. Uh, oh, it'll take a grip, though. All right, so let's go back to... I hate that you got to leave to re-enter. Um, all right, before we continue too far with this, I'm going to go ahead and insert a quick cut here, and we'll return to assembly in progress. Well, that was fun. Unless I just died. Then it was a little less than fun. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're having fun. And if you want to watch live, you can follow along on Twitch. I live stream the recording of the next six episodes at least once a week. I might even throw in some bonus content here and there if time allows. And you'll find the link in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll get notified when new episodes go up, live stream archives from some of my other stuff, and various and sundry other videos, because I do more than just this. And if you want to get notifications, don't forget to hit the bell. And if you really, truly enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and all that good fun stuff. If you have any questions, queries, quips, quotes, comments, complaints, or other whatnot, don't forget to leave those in the comments down below. Lastly, if you're enjoying the show, if you're getting some value out of it, then consider giving a lot of value back. Go to live.anonjunior.com. It'll take you to the Streamlabs page where you can tip or donate, however you want to think about it. And there's no preset amount because this is a straight up value for value proposition. So if you're getting value out of the show and you would like to give a little value back, even if it's just enough for a cheap cup of coffee, then uh, consider going, giving a little bit, especially if it tickled the nostalgia or open your eyes to a new game that you might play. And uh, with all that said and done, we're, uh, we're going to cut out, have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you next time.